morning, Essex. Good morning. It is great to see you all. Welcome to worship. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning. If you are on site or online, good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. My name is Dave Stambaugh, and it is a pleasure to be with you this morning. If you are here for perhaps the first or second time and would like to let us know that you are visiting with us, we have a Welcome to Worship book in our lobby. If you would like to let us know that you were here, um, you can also find out more information about our church online at essexucc.org. Let me direct your attention to the announcements quickly on the back of your bulletin. One that's not there because you may not have this bulletin by the time next Saturday uh, rolls around. Time change. Next week, mark those calendars. Who's happy? We get another, another extra hour. I'm so, so excited. Maybe. Lose an hour of what? You, you lose an hour of sleep, but you gain an hour of daylight. That's what we're talking So for us outdoor pickleball players, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. That's what we get to gain. However you look at it, change your clocks next week. That's what I want to make sure you know. Chicken pot pie delivery is, uh, is going to be available. See Jane Haney if, if you have any questions about that. Next week's going to be a great Sunday as well, March 10th. We are going to put together our midwinter meals. You're going to hear, be hearing a lot from our outreach and justice, justice committees, all of the great work uh, that they are doing. We'll also take uh, a collection for one great hour of sharing, a way we support our denomination and the ministries uh, of outreach and justice that they do all around the globe. We'll have a lot of great information for you uh, next week. And then as well, there's a couple Easter services. We'd like you to mark your date, uh, your date book, your calendar, your phone, wherever you uh, put those dates. Monday, Thursday service this year will be at 7 p.m. Um, at the Westbrook Congregational Church. We've got a great new tradition of um, gathering with other churches uh, that are local for us. This Monday, Thursday, we will be 7 p.m. at the Westbrook Congregational Church. And on Good Friday, our choir will be joining uh, in a uh, community cantata at the Trinity Lutheran Church. That service uh, will be at 7 p.m. on Good Friday. This is the day that we also celebrate uh, birthdays, the first Sunday of the month. And you can see there that Ann Craner has a birthday this month, and Audrey Lyons has a 100th birthday this month. So this is what we're gonna do for Audrey. As you know, she hasn't been in church in a while, um, but what we are going to do, her birthday is actually on the 18th. So on the 17th of March, what I want you to do, bring a sign that says, happy birthday, Audrey. Bring some balloons, bring some noisemakers, and we'll make sure that we sing to Audrey, and then we'll take that video over to her and, uh, and show it to her so she can uh, know that we are all celebrating. with. It's not too often you get to sing happy 100th birthday to somebody. So we wanna make that, we wanna make that very special. And finally, as you can see, our communion table is set this morning, and it's important for you to know that you are welcome. If it's your first time, if it's your 50th time, you don't have to be a member of our church. You don't have to be a member of our denomination. If you are here, it's important for you to know that all are welcome. And in that spirit, we are going to sing a new hymn this week. It's not in your hymnal, but the lyrics are on the back of your bulletin. I'm going to have Kevin play it through once so you hear the tune. It'll be on the, uh, the words will be on the back of your bulletin, also on the screen. So let's rise together in body or spirit. All are welcome in this place. Go ahead, Kevin.
be with you. Before you sit down, turn to those around you. Greet them this morning with the peace and love of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I've often said that all you need to do for our prayer time, to prepare for our prayer time, to uh, open your hearts for our prayer time, oftentimes is simply watch the news. And that will give you plenty to think about and pray for. And we like to split up our prayer, uh, our prayer requests typically into, into two categories. We talk about our joys and we talk about our concerns, right? We, we have those things that we want to celebrate, like Audrey Lyon's birthday, like Ann Craner's birthday. Those are, those are wonderful. But there are also some things that make our hearts heavy as well. And just this weekend, I, I found one story that gives us both. One story that gives us a joy and a concern. Um, I saw that there is some humanitarian aid finding its way into Gaza. There are some meals that are being delivered to the folks who are hungry there. Uh, the, my count was, I, I think they said 50 or 75,000 meals. That's the joy. The concern is that there's 500,000 people there who are facing hunger, who are facing starvation. So we want to uh, gather with all of those around the world who pray for folks who are, are in need. We want to pray for folks who are sick, who are suffering. We want to celebrate uh, with those who woke up this morning with a smile on their face. Maybe that's you, and maybe you'd like to share something. Maybe there's a story or a prayer request that you'd like to share with those of us who are here today. I think Dave is the one that dubbed us. Uh, Barbara is our, my uh, committed significant partner, and she had a fall on Wednesday. We don't know how bad. She saw the doctor on Thursday, the x-rays on Friday. She's in a lot of pain today, so she's not with us, and we're fearful that it may be a broken rib. Oh, thank you, friend. Thank you. Yep, coming to the back, all the way to the back. Anybody on the way to the back? <laughs> anybody, anybody. Then we'll go right to the back. Yes, Amanda. Some of you saw on Facebook, I became an aunt on Thursday. My brother and my sister-in-law had their first little girl, Artemis Patricia, on Leap Day. Wow. So she gets a birthday every four years then. Is that the way it's going? Well, how will they celebrate that? What are they going to do? Keep us posted. Keep us posted. We always like celebrating Leap Day birthdays. Anybody else? Let me invite you then to close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath. As you breathe in, imagine yourself being filled with God's love. Being filled with God's peace and God's comfort and God's strength. And as you exhale, imagine that breath, imagine that love and peace and comfort and strength finding its way into the world for all those who we would pray for this morning. Loving God, this morning we celebrate and rejoice in the power of your love the gift of your spirit as we proclaim the good news of your grace. A love and grace that welcomes us all, not only to this place and to this table as we celebrate the unity that we share, but a grace that welcomes us as your family, your children, and as you continue to draw us closer together, open our hearts 
that we might hear your word for us this day, that we might be faithful followers of Jesus. We join our hearts in prayer this morning as brothers and sisters lifting to you the joys and concerns of our lives. We pray and remember those who are hungry this day, those who are sick, those who are sad or sorrowful, And we also celebrate with those who are filled with joys, celebrating birthdays, good news. Be with us and strengthen us so that we might reach out in love to all those around us. As we now silently lift up to you all those who have asked for our prayers this day. God, we join our hearts and our voices together now with the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not to temptation. Deliver us from evil. Now as Kevin and the choir get in place for our morning offering, let me thank you in advance on behalf of all of those who are recipients of the ministry of this church for your generous, generous support. If you would like to give electronically this morning, there's a QR code in your bulletin and it'll be on the screen in just a few moments if you are watching online. As the ushers come forward, we will gratefully receive our morning offering.
would you bow your heads with me as we dedicate these gifts? Good and gracious God, we offer these gifts, this offering in response to your goodness and grace with grateful and sincere hearts. Continue to draw us closer to one another, that we might love and serve those around us as we do your work in the world. Amen. You may be seated. James gives us a very particular example in our text this morning of how not to play favorites, how not to show partiality between the rich and the poor, but I want you to hear this in a much broader context. I want you to hear this in regards to our welcome statement. Our statement that says all are welcome without distinction, regardless of race, age, ethnicity, sexual orientation, physical and mental ability, marital standing, economic status, and family congregation. That's why I wanted to sing that hymn this morning, all are welcome. With that in mind, hear these words from the book of James. This is a reading from the book of James, chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. My brothers and sisters, if you possess faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, do not show favoritism or partiality by treating some people better than others. If someone comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothing, and a poor person enters in filthy clothes, that are old and dirty, do, not pay atten do you pay attention to the one who is finely dressed and say, sit here in a good place, and say to the poor person, you stand over there or sit on the floor? If so, you have judged with wrong motives. That one person among you is better than another person, and you must not do that. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters. God has chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that is promised to those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor. Are not the rich the ones who are oppressing and exploiting you and dragging you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme and say bad things about the good name of Jesus Christ? the name of the one you belong to? But if you obey the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then you are doing right and all is well. Thanks, Marilyn. The royal law found in scripture the law of the kingdom, as one translation says, the great commandment, the golden rule, pretty much all just different names for the same principle and the same idea. Love God, love your neighbor, love yourself. If I had to give this sermon a name, it would simply be, obey the law. We are going to continue uh, today our way through the book of James that has emphasized faith and action, how practical our faith is. And in our text today, James unpacks for us why it's important to live out this royal law found in scripture, why it's important that our faith makes a difference in what we do. And we're gonna focus on three verses in particular that you heard. The first one is that first verse. Verse one, brothers and sisters. Let's just pause right there for a moment. Brothers and sisters. He didn't start with friends, Romans, countrymen, right? He wrote this to brothers and sisters, family, an intimate 
kind of bond. Folks that James cares deeply, deeply about. Brothers and sisters, do not show favoritism or partiality by treating some people better than others. Never treat people in different ways because of their outward appearance. One of the great things about different Bible translations is you can hear the same words in some different ways. Today's translation might be, don't judge a book by its cover. Right? While James uses this case study of rich and poor, again, I want to remind you to not get stuck there. Because he's using that as a specific example, but he's making a general principle the important focus of what our text is this morning. And keep in mind our church welcome statement, how broad it is. It reminds us that favoritism, prejudice, discrimination of any kind is bad. And so with Jesus as our role model, what we want to do is look to him. How did Jesus live out this royal law found in Scripture? What did people say about Jesus and the way he treated people? This is one quick verse from Mark chapter 12, just before we get that great commandment from Jesus. And we're going to get to that in a second. But just before, someone comes to Jesus and says, Teacher, we know that you are honest and do not play favorites. You treat everyone with the same respect, no matter who they are, because you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You teach the way of God. I think that could be another name for that royal law, the great commandment. The way of God. You may have heard it said this way. Have you ever heard this phrase, that that God is no respecter of persons, right? That we're all equal in God's eyes. That got the Quakers into a lot of trouble. I don't know if you know much about the Quakers. Anybody know much about the Quakers? You don't hear much about them too much these days. But the Quakers had a practice, or I should say they didn't have a practice, when everyone else in society would doff their hats, would tip their hats to their superiors or to the wealthy in society. The Quakers wouldn't do it because they had this idea, this crazy idea that everyone should be treated equally. And they didn't want to show that kind of respect for their superiors. Like I said, it got them in a lot of trouble. George Fox spent a lot of time in jail because it was a big deal back then not to do that. But the Quakers found a way to live out their faith practically in their setting. We don't really doff hats this more uh, anymore. We don't really, you know, do that kind of thing. So we ask ourselves as we look at the book of James, what are the ways that this passage hits home for us? I mentioned in the E! News that there was a hidden gem in this text from the Sermon on the Mount. I'm not sure how many of you dug deeply or found it, but I thought I would give a a chance if anybody wants to take a stab. It wasn't even one that was on the James and the saying of Jesus handout that I gave you a couple weeks ago. There's a couple more if you missed that or, or would like to get that. Because it's really more of the idea But in the Sermon on the Mount, we hear Jesus say this, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. And in verse 5 of James, we heard James say, Has not God chosen the poor of the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom? Heirs of the kingdom. And this is how he started that passage. He says again, 
brothers and sisters. But he adds something more. He says, beloved brothers and sisters. As if brothers and sisters wasn't enough, James says, beloved brothers and sisters. I care for you. You are my beloved. You are my brothers and my sisters. James goes on to say that when we show partiality to some, we dishonor others and fail to live out the royal law of loving our neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. You're rich, you're poor, you're black, you're white, you're married, you're single, you're divorced, you're widowed, you're Democrat, Republican neighbor. Even if your neighbor roots for the Red Sox, you are called to love them. Or the Yankees, there you go. You're welcome. We love our neighbor despite our differences. But it's difficult to love everyone, right? It's hard. I mean, in a way, that's what we do here every Sunday. We come here and we try to figure out how to do that. What does that look like on a practical basis? Living out that royal law is tough. That's why it's always great to see an example of it being done well. I saw a great example this weekend. Perhaps the best and purest example of what it means. Who knows the movie Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Who knows it? It's great. Say again? It's great. Who wants to give, for those who haven't seen it, how many folks haven't seen it? Folks who haven't seen it. So there's a handful. Who wants to give those folks a quick, brief description of guess who's coming to dinner? Don't be shy. If you've seen it, if you love it, don't make me do it. I'll do it if you want. Anybody? Marilyn, you want to tell us what, tell us what it's about, Marilyn? Well... The couple's daughter, I mean, they're white, and she's white, and she falls in love with a, with a black, I guess yeah, black yeah, yeah, man. Black, yeah, 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 yeah. And they have a wonderful relationship, and the, 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 uh, her, her guy, you know, meets the parents and, you know, tries to, to blend in. Yeah. And you finish it off. Oh, this, that's, a great, that's a great start. I will finish it. Okay. It's a great movie, exactly what you said. Made in 1967, when the idea of these two folks getting married was illegal in 16 or 17 states. And the movie unfolds, the, the guess who's coming to dinner part isn't even so much about Sidney Poitier. It's that Sidney Poitier's parents are coming to dinner, right? So this is going to be an interesting dinner. And as the movie, unf- and, and, and you never even get to the dinner scene until the very end, but the entire movie is all these people and their interactions, parents and children and spouses and potential in-laws. Fast- if you haven't seen this movie, you need to go home, just go speak into your remote, you know, if you've got one of those, guess who's coming to get dinner, it'll come up for free, you spend an hour and a half, best hour and a half you've ever spent. There's a line in this movie that perhaps more than anything else I've ever seen in my over 20 years of doing what I do summarizes the royal law found in Scripture, summarizes what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. Sidney Poitier is explaining He plays Dr. John Wade Prentice. He's explaining to Joanna's parents, is that's his intended, because everybody knows it's gonna be difficult, right? 1967, everybody knows this is gonna be hard. And this is what he says about Joanna's love for him. 
He says this, it's not just that our color difference doesn't matter to her. It's that she doesn't seem to think there is any difference. I'm going to repeat that. It's not just that our color difference doesn't matter. It's that she doesn't seem to think there is any difference. That's the secret. That's the royal law found in Scripture. That's what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. No difference. Right? It's the book of Romans that takes this metaphor of love and gets us there to the other side as well to understand how loving one another fulfills the law. In the book of Romans, we read, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The royal law found in Scripture. The law of love. When we live in love, we live in God, as John writes. And God lives in us because God is love. Close your eyes for a minute and let that sink in. When we live in love, we live in God. And God lives in us because God is love. God of love, we pray this day that we might understand this commandment, this law to love as simply as Joanna does. where she looks to another and doesn't seem to think there is any difference. May we love our neighbor as we love ourself. May this meal we are about to share strengthen us as we live out that royal law, that golden rule, that great commandment love our neighbor as ourself. Amen. Let me invite those who are assisting with communion to come forward at this time. As I mentioned earlier, it's very important for you to know that you are welcome to share communion with us. You don't need to be a member You don't need to be a member of our church. You don't need to be a member of our denomination. Your presence with us this morning uh, is your invitation to share the bread and the cup. I always like to announce as well, just in case, uh, that if you uh, are someone that perhaps needs a gluten-free option, there are some rice crackers on the tray for you. And the wine that we share each and every week is unfermented, otherwise known as grape juice. So we want to make sure that all are indeed welcome. With that in mind, let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O oh God, because you are good. Your mercy endures forever and our souls find rest in you alone. As the scriptures assure us, there is nothing that can separate us from your love. And so we gather together as brothers and sisters with glad and, seer, and sincere hearts to remember and celebrate that as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, 
and these grapes gathered together from many hills into one cup. We pray that they may nourish and sustain us so that by the power of your spirit, we would be made one as well. One with you, one with each other, channels of your love in a broken and hurting world. As we remember that it was in the night in which Jesus was eating his Passover meal with his disciples that he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to them and said, take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. As often as you do it, do it in the remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Amen.
cup of salvation. Let us partake together. The unison prayer of thanksgiving can be found in your bulletin. I invite you to join with me as we pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for nourishing us at this table and filling us with hope and new life. May your grace and love shine in our hearts as we continue to do your work in the world. Our closing hymn, number 395 in your black hymnal, In Christ There Is No East or West. Let's rise together in body or spirit. You may be seated. I hope you'll join us after the service uh, in our co-view room for some refreshments. I believe, let me just confirm, there will be cake. There will be cake, birthday cakes for all of those March birthdays. Before we go, just one quick question. For those of you who saw, guess who's coming to dinner, who know Guess who's coming to dinner? Here's, here's the question. Does anybody remember the theme song of the movie that played at the beginning, at the end, and pretty much throughout the entire movie? Does anybody remember? Oh, Marilyn, you're going to love this. Ready? That's the story of love. Safe to say, in that context, it's written about romantic love, right? But I think in a general way, we can apply it to the royal law of loving those around us. It still applies. You've got to give a little. You've got to take a little and let your poor heart break a little. You've got to laugh a little, cry a little, until the clouds roll by a little. You've got to win a little, lose a little, yes, and have the blues a little. That's the story of, that's the glory of love. Folks, there's no doubt that love isn't easy. If you want proof, go watch the movie. Love is messy, but it's the law. So obey the law and go in peace. Amen.